Hi, in this video, I'm going to show you how you can create a simple book cover like this one using Affinity Designer. Now, Affinity Designer is just one of many softwares you can use to create covers. I find Affinity Designer to be really good and it shares many of the features that Adobe Illustrator has. But if you don't want to use these softwares, these paid softwares, you can also use Canva because these types of books are quite simple and you don't really need any paid softwares or programs to make them. Now, usually these types of books take around about 20 or 30 minutes to create. But of course, you're not going to create something as simple as this for um, children's books or activity books. For them, you're going to take more time and you're going to test out many different variations of covers to create something that's appropriate and appealing to that market. Now, before I continue to the tutorial, uh, I'd like to say that don't get put off by these kinds of softwares, Affinity Designer, Adobe Illustrator. It does look complicated at the beginning, but once you get past that phase of struggle where you're trying to figure out what these tools are and what they do and how they work, it does become easier. And eventually you have access to so many different things that you can use to make professional looking covers and make your books stand out compared to say Canva or a free software like that. And during this phase of learning, you know, you might have to look at a lot of tutorials on YouTube. Um, there'll be certain things that you want to understand. Like, for example, on Adobe Illustrator, there's something called Clipping Mask. You might not know how to do that. Then you'll have to watch videos on it to find out how exactly it works. Or you might even Google whatever it is you're struggling with. But eventually, like I said, you'll get passed through that phase and you'll be able to use these softwares without any issues. Now onto the tutorial, I'm just going to open up Affinity Designer. And the first thing you want to do is click on new document here and then just select your size. So I will have my size here. So six times nine inches. The DPI dots per inch is going to remain at 300. You don't want anything less than that. And over here, I'm going to select inches as my unit. I'm just going to leave RGB as my color. You can also use CMYK, but to be honest, I haven't noticed any difference. I frequently order my books and I haven't noticed any difference between RGB and CMYK, even though CMYK is used for print. And margins, I'm just going to leave it as it is. So there's not going to be any margins and there's not going to be any bleed. So I'm just going to click on create. Okay, so I have my first artboard here. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to duplicate this. So I'm going to click on this artboard tool here and then just click on insert artboard. And then I'm just going to move this to the side a little bit. And now I have my front and back cover templates, which I'm going to design. The next thing I'm going to do is create a rectangle over the artboard. So I'm going to click on this rectangle tool here and then just draw out a rough rectangle over the artboard. And then now I'm just going to resize this. So over here at the bottom, it's going to be six times nine inches. And then just press enter. And then now what I'm going to do is align that into place so that it's in the center of my artboard. So I'm going to click on this alignment button here and then click on align center horizontally and then align middle vertically. The next thing I'm going to do is change the color of this. So of course you can decide on whatever colors you want to use. Usually you want to use something that goes well with the image and the text and the overall design. You don't want to just use random colors like let's just say you randomly just want to use this color, this pink color. It might not go well with the particular niche you're creating in. So in my case, as I showed you previously, I use a sort of teal, a green kind of color. So I use a color like this sort of in between blue and green. The next thing I'm going to do is download an image which I'm going to use on my cover. And my favorite site when it comes to downloading vector graphics is vecteasy.com. And the reason for this is because they have thousands or even millions of high quality vector images you can use. And also they allow you to use their graphics as they are without any modification. That's why Vecteasy is one of my favorite sites when it comes to downloading these graphics. And it's quite cheap as well. I think I only pay something like nine or ten dollars a month and you can download as many graphics or images as you want. So based on my niche, I'm just going to search for the image. So in my case, it's a forklift. So I'm just going to type that in and then click enter. And then you can see there's all these graphics I can download. So what I'm going to do is just download the same one which I use on my cover. So the one I use on my cover is this one here. So I'm just going to download it once again. And of course, you can use other sites to download graphics from. If you only have a Creative Fabrica subscription, then you can also download your graphics from there as well. So I'm just going to type in forklift to see what they have there. 
the graphics here are okay but to be honest i don't think they compare to the graphics of vecteezy you can see that the graphics are designed better and they look much more high quality okay so i have my graphics open here so i'm just going to delete this box and you can see here that the elements of this graphics they're all separate so i want them to be one whole image which i can move together so i'm just going to select all of this and then click on command and then g to group all of them now you can see that all of the parts of this image of this vector is together and i can now move it as one whole image so i'm just going to copy this onto my cover so right click on it and then copy and then i'm going to go over to my cover and then paste it and then i'm just going to resize this so that it fits my cover and then just place it at the bottom and center it by clicking on this one here align center the next thing I'm going to do is add my text, which in my case is forklift logbook. So I'm going to click on this text tool here and then I'm just going to click on anywhere here. And then if I just zoom in, I'm just going to type in forklift in all caps. And then I'm just going to make this bigger. And then at this stage, what you want to do is go through your fonts to find something that's appropriate and something that looks good. So in my case, I've already selected a font. So I'm just going to resize this to make it bigger. And then I'm just going to duplicate this underneath. So I'm going to hold on to option and then just drag it underneath to duplicate it. And then over here, I'm going to type in logbook. So one thing you can see is that this phrase here, logbook, is a little bit longer compared to forklift and I want them to be the same size and proportionate. So what I'm going to do is select this one here and then click on character at the top, this button here, character. And then what I'm going to do is just scroll down and then you can see that there's an option. There's an option for tracking. So I'm just going to reduce the tracking, which is going to reduce the spacing between the letters. So I'm just going to do that. So minus 14 seems perfect. So now you can see that both of these are the same size and proportionate to one another. And when it comes to designing, you know, you want to develop an eye for these kinds of details because even though they're subtle, they make a huge difference to the overall quality of your covers. So I'm just going to resize this, just make it a little bit smaller and then once again align it to the center. And then what I'm going to do now is just duplicate this one here to add in a subtitle. So once again, holding down the option key, I'm just going to drag it underneath and then I'm just going to resize this to make it smaller. And then I'm going to add in the text. And one thing you want to take into consideration is to make the main elements of your books stand out compared to other elements. So what I mean by this is on this cover, the main elements are this title here as well as this image. So you want them to stand out in comparison to the other elements, which in this case is only this subtitle. So I'm just going to make it italic so that it doesn't stand out as much. The next thing I'm going to do is just fill in this artboard. So it's going to remain the same color as this one here. So all I'm going to do is just hold on to option and create a copy. And then I'm just going to align it to the center. The next thing I'm going to do is place my cover template, which I've already downloaded. So I'm going to click on file, place, and then just select my template and then open. And then just place it somewhere here. And then create an artboard underneath it. So I'm going to click on the artboard tool again, and then just draw out a rough rectangle. And then I'm just going to resize it. So in my case, it's going to be 12.52 inches wide. And then 9.25 inches as the height. So I'm just going to put this in the center. So once again, using these alignment buttons. The next thing I'm going to do is lock this template into place by selecting it and then clicking on this lock button here. So now you can see that I can't move it and it's not going to come in the way for when I put the front and back covers onto the template. 
The next thing I'm going to do is group all of this together. So all of the elements, the image, the text, the background by clicking on command and then G. And then I'm just going to copy this here. So once again, holding down the option key, I'm just going to drag this across to create a copy. The next thing I'm going to do is just align this into place. So I'm going to click on this box here, align top, and then this one here, align right. So now I'm just going to make it bigger to fit my template. So holding down the option key, I'm just going to make it bigger. And then I'm just going to do the same with the back cover. And then once that's done, I'm just going to group both of these together. Now I'm just going to reduce the opacity to see if everything's in place with the template that's underneath it. So you can see that everything's within the template. The next thing I'm going to do is just hide the template which is underneath. So I'm just going to untick this box here to hide it. And then I'm just going to restore the opacity of this to 100%. And the final step now is to export this cover. So I'm going to click on file, export, and then make sure that PDF is selected. And once again, 300 DPI. And then I don't want my whole document to get exported. So I'm going to select artboard three and then click on export. And then I'm just going to save it onto my desktop. So here's the cover, as you can see that it's complete and it's ready to upload onto KDP. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, then don't forget to like it and make sure you subscribe to my channel for more videos like this.